All right, let's begin. So yeah, the Native American culture, we see here, what's this picture of right now? What was this picture? Pole. Yeah, totem pole, right? Has anyone ever seen one before in person? Okay. Uh, yeah, some of them are lower to the ground. Some of them are, you know, several meters, several yards tall. But again, these are things that generally are maybe a, a record of some family clan or lineage. So um, what's important about uh, Native Americans? Well, first of all, their structure of how they, they operate. So if you're in a tribe, you still need some leadership, right? And maybe you're part of your own tribe and you don't even know it. Maybe it's your family, right? So kind of like a, a family or an extended family, tribes are governed by a council and an appointed chief. So the people that make most of the decisions for the tribe is elders or chiefs, right? Okay, appointed, maybe they're the strongest male warrior. So that, that's an important thing to, to note is that, you know, that they don't have this democratic system where they just vote for someone. Uh, it could be passed down from generation to generation who is the leader. It could just be the oldest male becomes that person. Uh, they did other things such as forming alliances and partners with other tribes. Again, not all of them did war and, and fight with one another for their overall protection and peace. Some of them did join together and some of them join together to stop these very pale skinned people from intruding on their homes, right? So um, they were committed, they had strong faith, it looked a little bit different, quite a bit different. Um, they had these people called shamans, right? You may have heard this term before in other religions. Uh, shamans are like these mystical people, medicine men, they were really there to kind of, um, you know, talk with the spirits, connect with the spirit world, right? They would use some drugs to maybe help them get there. Maybe they would hallucinate, right? Um, but they believed that they could stay in contact with the, those of the underworld, okay? Um, along with that, uh, they believed in different spirits, in their ancestral spirits. They, they worship kind of nature. Um, I don't want to say hippie, but you, you kind of get that vibe from the, the nature kind of loving um, part of Native Americans. Um, there's not like a central godhead. So there's not like this Zeus that's the leader of the gods. There's not like Brahman, who's the leader, again, of the Hindu gods, right? Um, and, and so they, to explain the world that they live in, right? If you can't explain how the moon works or the light from the moon or, or when it rains, right? You, you at times can make up these deities and then to appease those deities, you could ultimately then kind of create those stories and those backgrounds from it. Uh, most of these Native American groups in North America um, I didn't have any real places of worship. When we look in South America, the Aztecs, the Mayans, those people were uh, worshiping at those temples. Um, some even went to the extent of human sacrifices, right? Uh, maybe they sacrificed children. Maybe they sacrificed their um, defeated foe. Okay. Um, they had stories that, and tried to explain different parts in, in different places in this world. Um, if you've ever been to New Hampshire, uh, there's a mountain that looks like it's been carved, but it looks like this old man, this old Native American, and he has this giant schnoz of a nose, and you can see it on uh, the quarter. They put it on the New Hampshire kind of quarter. Or uh, if you've ever been to Devil's Tower, anyone ever been to that place in Wyoming before? Okay. So they have these um, kind of stories that try to explain how they came into existence. So Devil's Tower, they say this giant bear, right, this god of a bear scratched the side of this granite uh, structure, and so you can see these marks of the claws of a bear uh, in, in the remains. 
Uh, the Sioux did some ghost dancing, which was to potentially conjure up um, things in, in, in celebration of the underworld. Uh, Navajo did sand paintings, other, other kind of spiritual things. You, you may have seen Indian dream catchers. Maybe you just have one because you think they're cool. Um, human sacrifices, again, was something that was common amongst the Americans. So here's again Devil's Tower. People sometimes climb this. It is like a lightning rod, so if it ever gets some activity, you don't want to be climbing that when it is uh, lightning out. But again, you can kind of see uh, how they justified this uh, design of this, this feature. It looks like maybe a, a, right, a giant bear could have clawed that. Here's some sand painting. Totem poles, are they a religious function? We kind of answered that question already. It's more of preserving history and uh, clan lineage rather than anything to worship. Uh, what's this right here? What does it look like? The house. It looks like, the, like the, maybe the start of the house. What else? What do you think is on top? A dead body. Okay, so it's actually a dead body. Why is it elevated? Why is it so big? Why is the body elevated? Where, where do your, Europeans and uh, uh, Americans put bodies? Underground. Okay, they put them underground. So there is this belief that the ground is sacred, right? And so, therefore, you do not bury people in the ground. So that, that's just a burial practice. So they just leave them there forever? I mean, ultimately, they would have some sort of scavenging animal that would most likely take advantage of that. Uh, and then ultimately end up in the ground anyway. So uh, I don't know how well they thought that through. But uh, regardless, there's other sites that you can be and see. Has anyone ever been to an Indian burial ground? Has anyone ever been to a casino on an Indian burial ground? You don't want to mess with that. There's some, a lot of crazy activities that happen when you, you mess with Indian burial grounds. No, right, that, that's kind of the talk, is that the, they're protected sites, right? They're spiritual sites. And so here's a burial ground, effigy mounds there in northern Iowa. Right, do depict some of these kind of animals here. Maybe you've seen it on a quarter. Probably not, because we don't use quarters anymore. Uh, Indian Mounds in Burial Park, Minnesota. There's a rock effigy there in Georgia. Kind of see the shape of a, a bird. Uh, you see the, the wings off to the right, and then the, the tail feathers at the bottom as well. Uh, this one always reminds me of kind of like a, a golf course. Um, I want to play golf there because it's a sacred site, right? Um, the Great Serpent Mounds there in Ohio, probably one of the more famous ones. Oops, okay, so we, uh, this is going to crash. Uh, the next one's going to say uh, food. It's going to say food. Uh, I'm going to take some time to uh, reload this because it's going to crash here in a second. But, um, yeah, so we're going to look at the Three Sisters, which I, I've told you before. Uh, is something important and, and you want to know kind of the uh, importance of uh, just their, their diet, right? What they could use and what they did use to kind of survive off the land and what was more most productive. So yeah, the food, three sisters, right? Consists of corn, consists of beans and even squash. So I'll, I'll get that here in a second. Uh, we'll fast forward. All right, food. So other things that they grew is yams, tomatoes, potatoes. Every time I say say tomatoes and potatoes that quickly in succession, I think of that Thanksgiving Day wrap. You wouldn't know what I'm talking about. No. Greens, what? beans, tomatoes, potatoes. Oh, yeah. Come on, right? Um, they hunted turkey. Uh, interesting enough, 
uh, someone wanted to actually make the uh, turkey the national bird of the United States. It was just so unique and so rare, um, but they didn't. Pheasants, they deer. Its own genocide is committed towards turkeys every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we actually raise them as livestock, too. So, pheasants, deer, bison, elk, bear, rabbits. Um, oysters, so this would be more coastal foods, right? Oysters, fish, anyone oyster fans? Who's the brave person to say, yeah, I like oysters? Jay? Like yeah. Oyster crackers. Oyster crackers, well, okay. Everyone likes oyster crackers. No? All right, oysters, I like oysters when they're all cooked. Fish, any fish fan? 